Hey guys, uh, Russian Sparky here. So today's comparison and competition really is among alignment suppliers. Um, I don't need to introduce any of these brands to you. I'm sure you heard about Knipex, uh, probably the leader in the German hand tools market, Klein and Channel Lock, uh, the leaders in uh, American uh, market. Knipex, these are still made in Germany. These are still made in the US. Uh, this is Milwaukee. Uh, they've proven to be a pretty decent hand tool even though uh, they're made in Taiwan or China. Uh, these are just uh, my older uh, clients, uh, linesmen's. Well, if you're not from the US or North America, linesmen's pliers is this, this specific size and configuration of electrician's pliers. They're 240 millimeters long or nine and a half inches. Um, they're good for pretty much anything an electrician would need to do. So, so let's begin. All right, let's talk models, prices, and quality, initial quality observations. Uh, Knipex, made in Germany, model 0901240, retails to $40 to $45. Uh, machined well. Um, the, uh, the mouth seems even. The joint is... Eh, a little tight like it it feels a little sticky which i'd imagine it's normal for a brand new tool uh this opening is round it's got this uh steel tape puller fish tape puller uh holder you can also use it to pry nails if need be i uh, you know i'm not considering these small things in this in this review so I, I don't care about that otherwise i'd get them all with that or i get them all with a crimper doesn't matter to me at the moment but um all of these have this gap all of these uh between the uh these grabbing surfaces the tips that is to allow for the wear on the cutting surfaces as they wear down the mouth is going to close but that way there is not a gap in the cut between the cutting surfaces that's the way i was told so um uh, next price wise is this uh 2000 series klein retails for 30 to 35 dollars the joint is nice and loose it feels like it's been broken in but it's not it's a brand new tool there's no rattle it's not like loose side to side it just moves freely which is good by the way these are a couple of years old and there's still no play there and it still works pretty well freely by the way they're the next one in the price point 20 to 25 us dollars at the moment um you yeah, know pretty still in pretty good shape uh, next one, uh, twenty to twenty-five dollars. These uh, Channel Lock three sixty-nines. Uh, the joint is kind of, eh, it's a little, it feels a little tight, but um, I'd imagine it will work itself loose. I, I don't consider that unless it's like uncomfortably sticky. I don't consider that a defect, or I'm not going to hold it against them. The rivet is a little smaller than it is on the rest of them, so that's one thing to notice. Although, again, I've never heard of a channel lock having a problem with their rivet. Any of them are going to have a problem if you whack it on the rivet with a hammer by mistake, and then they're going to start sticking. But that's true of any uh, tool like this. Uh, so next one, retailing from anywhere from $18 to $25 are these. And uh, one thing I noticed, I mean, they all look pretty decent, all of these. Um, it's got this, this paint in there. The model before this, even though it's the same model number, it's 4822 uh, It had uh, reaming ridges here that you could use to ream pipe. This is smooth, and they put this cheapo paint on it. So I don't know what is up with that. I'm sure that saves them on manufacturing because having to uh, put those, uh, uh, those ridges there, the reaming ridges, adds to the manufacturing cost and it's all about the cost these days it seems so that's why they probably cut it it's the same model number it's just that they changed the model which kind of drives me nuts it was a nice feature none of the rest of them have that this one did at that point at that price point they were giving you a crimper you know this little grabbing surface here like like these two and uh you had uh the reaming ridges but not anymore anyway let's get to the cutting tests I, I don't anticipate any of these uh linesmen having any issues cutting this uh, 12 awg or uh, four square millimeter uh, cable 
no issue there. Very soft and smooth. I, I gotta hand it to uh, uh, Channel Locks. Very nice uh, and smooth cut. You hear that 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 snap? It sounds like it's a good thing. It's not because it reverberates through your bones. Like it 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 actually I, I feel it in my joints. This let's hear it again. That's not a good snap. Uh, clients, at least, they temper. Uh, their their handles uh, to absorb that snap. Uh, Knipex, even if they do it, which I doubt, they don't advertise it. So that's one thing to keep in mind. That snap, that absorbing, uh, uh, that absorbing snap. That's a th that three zone uh, uh, heat treatment that that clients get. They get separately uh, uh, treated uh, cutting surfaces, the grabbing surfaces, and the handles. Handles are specially treated to absorb that snap. Knipex doesn't have that. No issue there. Yeah, I, I feel that snap, even though it's a rubber handle that's supposed to kind of absorb it. So keep that in mind. That's an important thing. If you're cutting this cable, you know, a hundred times a day, like most of us do, you're going to feel it. it. It accumulates and this snap, you're going to pay for it later. I feel it, like I, I feel it. Like, it didn't hurt me. I mean, don't don't get me wrong, but like I, I felt it. All right, guys. Before we get too carried away with our tests, uh, let's look at the gap between the cutting surfaces in all of these. Uh, so far, all we cut with the new ones, these three are new. Is this uh, 12 gauge cable, which shouldn't have created any problems. So uh, this one is used. So you you gonna you you bound to see some nicks. And sure enough, they're right there. So we'll compare it later too, if to see if any new ones appeared. But this is not a main contestant. We we gonna you know look between these three probably and possibly this one. Channel lock. No gap. The cutting surfaces. They look good. They come together nicely. Knipex has a bit of a gap here. Uh, that's how they're manufactured, I guess. They're brand new, and you know that there's a gap there. Yep, there. Um, all right, we'll see what happens to that later. And these clients have a bit of that too. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. It's, it's a tiny gap closer to the joint as well. Uh, Milwaukee has no gap. All right, we'll start by cutting a sub rope. Uh, none of these, well, these three cutting surfaces haven't seen any serious action yet. Like I said, all the cut with them so far is this. So uh, technically, if, if they're sharp and well made and come together nicely, they should cut this rope no problem. I don't expect much from this. These are used, so if I do this, yeah, the rope is not going to fall away. So, you know, did not really expect it to. All right, channel lock, 369s. Look at that. Falls away nicely. Okay. Knipex. Cutting with Knipex. Nope. Nope. I'll give him another chance. If you remember, there was a slight gap closer to the rivet. Let me try further away from the rivet when they come to get it closer. No siree. All right. No luck there. All right. Klein 2000s. The heavy duty ones. Yeah, it's leaving. Still leaving a bit there. Milwaukee. Yeah, nothing. All right, well, so far, channel lock is the winner here. Let's continue. All right, guys, let's compare the effort it takes uh, to cut cable. Uh, this is uh, a 10 gauge or six square millimeters with uh, four conductors. Uh, so let's see how much effort it takes. I, I realize it's subjective, but let's just see. The 213 clients, a reasonable amount of effort, but no issues. Channel lock, wow, very smooth. Uh, 
it runs out of the length of the surface. That's why, like, there's a bit of a pinch. There's a bit of a, like, a hangy there. There's a piece of hanging insulation. But that's, you know, not an issue. Very smooth. Very little effort. Uh, Knipex. It's 5 millimeters shorter than the rest of them. This is a 235 millimeters. The rest of them are 240. I don't know if that makes a difference, but... Man, that snap. <laughs> I feel it. I, you know, one, two cuts is not a problem, but I would go nuts if I had to feel that snap in my bones and my joints like all day. Uh, okay, Klein 2000s. Less effort than, than Knipex, definitely no snap, but more effort than channel lock. So good for channel lock. All right, most effort out of Milwaukee. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to show you next, most of you will consider barbaric. Uh, this is cable AC. This was MC, aluminum sheath, for those who don't know it. Uh, a fairly easy job for any linesman. This is steel. So, yeah, normally you wouldn't be cutting uh, AC cable with... Uh, with, with, with the with line, linesmen, but you know, this is a test, they're all doing this. So, and how else can I put you know, two, three months worth of usage on pliers in the you know, course of a half a day, right? So, we'll start with these what I call soft clines, no issue, took me some effort, but channel lock. Uh, a little more effort, but you did it. Knipex. More effort than Klein's, but still did it. Klein 2000s. Probably easiest of them all. Give it again, just to make sure if I'm praising it, I have to make sure they deserve that praise. Yeah, no issue. And uh, Milwaukee. Nah. No, go there. Okay. Cutting SJOW cable. It's four... It's, it's a 12 AWG or four square millimeters, stranded. Starting with the soft clines, 213s. No issue, but it's, it's running out of the cutting surface there. It's uh, the length there is what, what's happening. I think we're going to get the same issue with uh, channel locks because they're also they an even smaller cutting surface there. The length of the cutting surface, that is. Yeah, cuts easily, but yeah, it's running out of the length of the knives there toward the end. Knipex. Yeah, the least amount of effort, and look how big this mouth is. I bet you that's because of that. The 2000 clients. Yeah, probably on par with the other kind. Milwaukee. Yeah, I choose a little bit. Yeah, probably doing the worst of them all. All right, let's continue with testing. These are stainless steel, US made screws, number 10s, or M5s in European connotation. This is probably the most barbaric part of the uh, test. These are SPACs. They're pretty hard screws. Uh, they're made for everything from wood down to masonry, concrete, and sheet metal. They're pretty hard. So if you cut these 
with these you're putting your tool through a lot of stress by doing that again I'm, i realize that on a daily basis yeah you won't be cutting these screws with your lines mess but how else can i put you know a couple of months worth of use in the course of one afternoon right so that's why i'm doing this so let's start all right let the cutting begin spacks against the soft clines no issues but I have to say that's the hardest cut so far as far as the material goes of all the materials I've been cutting so far that's probably the hardest I can tell channel locks yeah, a little smoother a little smoother Knipex. yeah harder than the first two Hard clines, again close to the rivet. Yeah, probably on par with channel locks in Milwaukee. Let's see. Yeah, probably the most effort of them all. All right, guys, the moment of truth, right? We're gonna look at the gap and see what happened you know before and after i can tell you right away that with these with these soft clients there's a gap here that appeared that wasn't there before i'll show the before and after but i'm pretty sure that that's that's the case let's look at the channel locks here right a bit of a gap appeared it's not an indentation it's just a you know a little bit of a gap it was not there before and it's it's there now just a bit. What happened to Knipex seems the most dramatic because I mean, I'm s squeezing these together as hard as I can. Like I'm squeezing these together and there's a big gap all along here and there's an indentation in the middle, like clearly an indentation. Uh, unlike any of the rest of them, there's, there's a big, like there's a hole there. I mean, big compared to what was there before. Uh, the 2000s? Yeah, that gap that was there before is still there i don't know if it's any bigger i'll try to do the comparison you guys will be the judges of that and uh milwaukee got a gap after all that we put it through but there, there are no indentations so the conclusion that i'm drawing from that is that it's a decent steel it's a decent tool for for the price especially but they, they don't sharpen these edges anywhere near as much as the rest of these guys do so yeah sure they, they last longer but they're just so much harder to cut with so that's my conclusion, uh, and I'm sticking to it. Give me likes, give me dislikes. If you're going to put a thumb down, uh, just tell me why. I'd like to know. Other than that, be well, guys. Take care of yourselves, and talk soon.